Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember to support our channel, please subscribe. The influential chief lady of Elizabeth I's bedchamber. Elizabeth I is considered one of the greatest queens that had ever ruled over England. During her reign, she managed to defeat the Spanish Armada and see if a number of threats to her throne. She would execute Mary, Queen of Scots, and bring an end to the rebellions regarding her, but also she tried her hardest to unite the country. The Elizabethan period saw the birth of theatre and many cultural advancements, and she surrounded herself with the most loyal men and women at court. She valued the people in particular that she spent time with on a daily basis, and a number of her closest ladies had been with her all her life. One of those women was Catherine Carey, who later became known as Dame Catherine Nollies, who was appointed as Chief Lady of the Bedchamber of the Queen. She was her first cousin, and Catherine's life herself was incredibly interesting. But what is the story behind the influential Chief Lady of Elizabeth I's bedchamber? Now, Catherine Carey was born in 1522, and was the daughter of William Carey, a gentleman of the Privy Chamber and a squire to the body of Henry VIII. This was a position where he helped the king wash and get dressed each day, but her mother was incredibly high profile in Tudor society. Mary Boleyn was Catherine's mother, and she had once been the mistress of Henry VIII. Mary, her mother, is considered the older Boleyn girl, with Catherine's aunt Anne Boleyn eventually being the king's second wife and the mother of Elizabeth I. Mary Boleyn, it's believed, may have had children with Henry VIII and that the king may have fathered children with her, but some historians have questioned the father of Catherine Carey, and many believe that Catherine was, in fact, the illegitimate child of King Henry VIII. If this were true, then it means that Elizabeth I would have been the potential half-sister of Catherine, meaning that the two could have shared a father. Catherine was born in the year that Anne Boleyn came to England, meaning that her sister and Catherine's mother had already been having an affair with the king for a year or so. It's believed, though, that Catherine was a witness to the execution of her aunt Anne Boleyn when she was beheaded at the Tower of London. Anne had been accused of adultery, incest and treason, and it's believed that these charges were false and made up by Thomas Cromwell. But despite this, Anne was executed on Tower Green in what was believed to have been a private execution away from the eyes of the public. But we know that there were several hundred witnesses inside of the Tower who saw her last moments before the French swordsman took her head clean off. Catherine, it's considered, was there to see the execution, and it's not known why she was there. Some claim that she was there in her aunt's final night of life, as she tried to distract and entertain her taking her mind off the impending execution that she was to face. But despite being the daughter of a Berlin girl, following Anne's execution, she became a maid of honour in the household of Anne of Cleves, Henry VIII's fourth wife, and also Catherine Howard's, his tragic fifth wife, who would also be executed at the Tower. But on the 26th of April 1540, around the age of 18, she married Sir Francis Nollies. He later became a Knight of the Garter in his later life, and he had previously been knighted in 1547. He became a treasurer of the royal household also, and with this he was in charge of the money that the royal court was spending. Following her marriage, Catherine became known as Mistress Nollies, and then from 1547 she became known as Lady Nollies. With her husband, she lived in Reading and also in Oxfordshire, and the pair were both Protestants. Following the death of Henry VIII's successor, Edward VI, she then left England with her husband for her safety during the reign of the very staunch Catholic Queen Mary I. Many Protestants went into exile for the fact they were worried that Mary would persecute them and even possibly execute them, and Catherine had more things to worry about as her mother was a Boleyn daughter, the arch enemy of Mary's mother, who was Catherine of Aragon. While she was away, Princess Elizabeth, her cousin, wrote to her, and the two became friendly, but following Elizabeth I becoming queen, Lady Catherine then became the chief lady of the bedchamber. This was an incredibly powerful and exclusive position within the Queen's court, and she was the most senior amongst the Queen's ladies-in-waiting. Elizabeth I would never recognise her as a half-sister, and the pair never really spoke about the fact they could have been with the same father as in Henry VIII, but Catherine at court was one of the Queen's favourites, and she was incredibly close to her and she would share her closest secrets with her. 
and the pair would often discuss things long into the night. But with her husband, Sir Francis, the couple had a number of children who survived into adulthood. It's believed that only the last son, named Dudley, died in infancy. But some of her children became incredibly powerful. Her first child was a daughter named Mary, who was born in 1541. And then a the year later, she had a son named Sir Henry Nollies, who became a member of Parliament. Her third child was Lettice Nollies, who became the Countess of Essex and a close friend of Elizabeth I. However, Lettice would then marry the first Earl of Essex, but then she married Robert Dudley, the first Earl of Leicester. Robert Dudley was the favourite of the Queen's, and because of this, the marriage greatly upset the Queen, and Lettice Nollies was banned from court. Her fourth child was William, the first Earl of Banbury, who later married Elizabeth Howard, the daughter of Thomas Howard, the first Earl of Suffolk. Another child was born in 1546 named Edward, who became an MP, and the following year, another son named Robert, who also became an MP, was born. Richard was born to Catherine in 1548, who was another MP, showing how influential the Nollies family would become in politics during the reign of Elizabeth I and after. Elizabeth Nollies was born in 1549, and another daughter named Maud was born in 1550. However, she died young. The couple continued to have children, including Thomas, Francis Nollies the Younger, Anne Knowles, and three more daughters before their final child, as mentioned, died in infancy. This meant that Catherine Carey gave birth to a colossal 14 children, and despite this, most of them lived long lives, which was shocking at the time. Childbirth was incredibly dangerous, but it seemed to be no problem for Lady Catherine Nollies. She remained a prominent player at Elizabeth I's court, and she supported the Queen for a significant period of time of around 10 years. This was important as she served the Queen when she came onto the throne, and as she tried to stabilise the country. Elizabeth needed good people around her, who could advise and who could support her when she needed to make tough decisions. However, whilst being at Hampton Court Palace on the 15th of January 1569, Catherine Nollies died inside of her chamber. It's believed that Elizabeth I was very upset by her passing, and she was outlived by her husband and children. To signify how important she was to Elizabeth I, her funeral took place inside of Westminster Abbey, and she was buried in St Edmund's Chapel inside of the Abbey. This is significant, as it means today that Catherine and Elizabeth I both lie at rest beneath the same roof, not too far away from each other. A commemorative plaque can be found in the Abbey, and her epitaph states... The Right Honourable Lady Catherine Nollies, Chief Lady of the Queen's Majesty's Bedchamber, and Wife to Sir Francis Nollies, Knight, Treasurer of Her Highness's Household, departed this life the 15th of January 1568 at Hampton Court, and was honourably buried in the floor of this chapel. This Lady Nollies and the Lord Hunson, her brother, were the children of William Carey, Esquire, and the Lady Mary, his wife one of the daughters and heirs to Thomas Boleyn, Earl of Wiltshire and Ormond, which Lady Mary and sister to Anne Queen of England, wife to K. Henry VIII, father and mother to Elizabeth, Queen of England. But despite being a very important person inside of Elizabeth I's court, she was outlived by her children, and many of them went on to have very prosperous lives. She was a talented lady who knew how to further herself at court, and through marriage she became even more established. Her mother ultimately was Mary Boleyn, the mistress of the king, and she certainly also saw a number of distressing events throughout her life, including the execution of her aunt, Anne Boleyn. But Catherine died at around the age of 47, and she remains a remarkable Tudor woman who was incredibly important to the Queen, Elizabeth I. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.